I'm back and man how different this is. This must be high tide because there's water up here. Tons more than there was last time I was here. Well my path appears to be a little bit wet so it's a good thing I brought my appropriate shoes this time. Hello Mr. Snail. Are you trying to avoid being inundated by water? Like climbing up on this grass? Alright. Oh, you got some friends doing the same thing. Hello! The animals that live here clearly have a dynamic environment that they have to be prepared to experience twice a day. You have this high tide and then low tide and then again later on high tide and then low tide so you can't exactly just get used to not being uh, underwater like this pickled grass here it definitely was un not underwater before when I was here but now it's, it's just very much underwater so the animals and the plants have to get used to that so there's only certain kinds of animals and plants that can really survive out here there's also some animals like some of the birds that come in at low tides and then they can grab food but they're not around right now because they don't really want to mess with all this uh, deep water. A lot of the highest part of the marsh um, has needle rush. Um, this is black needle rush here. It's very pointy. They also have a lot of rack line um, of that dead cord grass. The cord grass though is a little bit closer to the water and you can't see it very well but it's some of that stuff that's kind of sticking up from the ground um, or from the water itself. And then in the most kind of puddly looking portion that is the low marsh. So that part is the most underwater uh, right now and really most of the time and you see different animals and different plants in each section because of the amount of water they get. We've got some floating rack here, all the dead cord grass that provides a nice habitat. It looks like it's kind of going out towards um, the ocean so maybe it's falling tide. Um, so technically I'm walking this way too so that might impact the way the water is flowing but I think it's going that way. Okay, I stopped walking, so look at how fast that water is moving back out towards the ocean. So, tide must be falling, and maybe, I don't know, like an hour or so, sometime soonish, this area will uh, no longer be underwater and be starting to get kind of dry again, and then waiting until the next time the tide goes in, comes in. This is really cool. I just noticed you have all these um, lines here on the pathway that have been made by the pulling of the tide and it's neat not only because it's it's cool looking but then you look over next to it and you don't have the same thing so it's clearly um, in this kind of channelized area so i think this is about where i pointed out pickle grass before and um saw the little fiddler crab yeah it's um a little bit underwater now but fiddler crabs are probably under there in the little holes, waiting it out. Check it out! These little snails, little periwinkle snails, usually you find them up on top of the cord grass, but these guys are deep under the water and you can see their little trail. We have gone a long way. Oh, sorry, you can't see very well. Oh, wait, that's a different one. This is the one. He just made that trail. He's at the end of the trail. So he went at least from that guy over to here. Good job, little buddy. Kind of sad I didn't see any fish um, out here, but I guess they know better than I do. And if the tide is falling, they know they need to get out of here before they get stuck on the dry land. 